We're really applying the that word ethos, that credibility, but this time on how to find a credible source. What makes something credible? What are the ethos, the credibility? So sources that lack credibility are difficult to include in a research report because they can easily be disproven. And it also negatively reflects your research efforts as well. So you need sources for research, otherwise it wouldn't be research. It wouldn't meet the conventions of that genre. So think of any of the following. Academic articles. So I provided a little tutorial on that. News articles, documentaries, videos, credible websites, and primary research. So I'm going to go into each one of these just to kind of clarify. So academic articles, I did a separate tutorial on how to find those through the library databases. But any published article found on these library databases or even something just called Google Scholar and or any type of literary journal is defined as an academic article. They're given that title, scholarly academic articles. I'm so sorry, I'm on my phone, so my, <laughs> my text messages are coming through. They, they are given the title of scholarly academic articles because they are peer-reviewed where a group of scholars get together review this academic's work. Usually it's a professor in the department or it could be a professional in um, in a business or an organization, but they went out, did field research, collected the data and wrote a lengthy article to get scholarly reviewed. So a group of academics get together, form a committee, review the article and approve it. So it's a very high form of, of credibility. And EBSCO is the most popular database. And I have a separate tutorial on how to, how to use those. But that's one type of source that can be really helpful. Another type of source is um, a news article. Now that can be in the form of a magazine or a newspaper. And the difference, sometimes, you know, understandably students get confused. Hey, what's the difference between this and a page on a website? If you have to, that's where you have to, you have to go into the, the source itself and see what it's published on. So for example, these are popular news sources. Some of you all have already reviewed some of these in my class. Uh, the Atlantic, The Guardian, I really like. New York Times, El Paso Times. Um, I put BuzzFeed on there. BuzzFeed's known for sillier kind of quizzes. What type of bread are you? You know, things like that. But sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes they, they have investigative journalists um, go in and r write a report on a topic. So very, very rarely, but I, I like to throw that on there. Sometimes they have it. Uh, Time Magazine, you know, anything like that. It's a published newspaper or magazine. And again, it just depends. So if you're if you're doing research and you're not quite sure, you know, if it's a page on a website or if it's a ma magazine or newspaper, well, go to the homepage. And usually these pages have an about me section where it tells you, you know, we're a group of journalists that write for this magazine. They usually use that terminology to help you distinguish um, versus, you know, if it's just a page on a website. But feel free to send me links and say, I'm not quite sure what type of source this is. Can you help me? But these are very credible forms of research as well that you can think about. Um, and I, I like to list these. So if you want to go into their pages first to see, especially I really like The Atlantic and The Guardian. They have really interesting articles that could help you for your topics. And that's one form of it as well. Another type of source are... Um, documentaries and what those are their videos their video genres they're usually either about a person a moment in time or just a general idea you know the internet for example that's a documentary about the pros and cons and the problems of the internet and its future outlook on society um, documentaries present factual information usually um, they're credible because they usually interview professionals. They have interviews, people talk throughout it, and below the screen it has who they are. So it boosts that credibility. You know, it depends on the nature of the documentary. You have to be a little careful. But they're relevant, and they're more popular now more than ever because of the easy access people have to them, especially if you have streaming 
software. So Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Amazon, even YouTube. Again, check to see who uploaded it. But there's really great documentaries out there that might relate to your topics that you can use as a source. Now, just videos to stem from documentaries and just talk about videos in general. We're in a very digital era now more than ever. Um, So we have access to a lot of video news reports and just topic discussions, mainly through YouTube, right? Now, now what's the problem with this? Anybody can upload videos to YouTube, anyone. You don't have to have any type of credibility to upload information. So be very, very careful that if you find information on YouTube that, or just any type of website, that the video is credible. How can you do that? Check the username. Who are they? What have they uploaded in the past? Uh, What else have they created? Do they have a lot of followers? Now, that doesn't always mean that they're credible still because nowadays everybody's becoming a YouTuber, right? And they don't have to really be official to be famous. So again, think about where they're getting their information from. If they don't state where it's from, be very careful. Ethos, credibility of the person in the video. Did they interview anybody? Who are they? If they mention their name, can you Google them? And does information come up about them? Do they have a website? Do they have a LinkedIn profile? You know, who are they? View count, but again, view count doesn't really matter because, you know, YouTubers can go out. I'm not trying to diss YouTubers. It's their, it's actually a pretty hard job. I couldn't do it. But, you know, They're famous for various reasons. You you can't depend on view count alone. Uh, Again, just think about the information presented. Do they refer to professionals if they themselves aren't? They don't have to be professionals, but who are they referencing? So just be very careful with videos. Websites, (laughs) that's another one. Uh, The following websites can be credible sources. .org, anything that's .org, it means it's an organization. So it's credible. It's an established organization. .gov is government data. You know, if you need if you need census information about a population or a community, that's collected data. It's very credible, so you can definitely use that. .edu is education. So sometimes there's articles within that that people publish on, and that would be highly credible. .com can still be used, but what you want to avoid are blogs. If you're not sure what blogs are. Those are written by anybody. Anybody can create a blog because blogs are almost journals in a sense where anybody can go and type information that they want and they're very biased, meaning they're very one-sided. They don't have to conduct research to share an opinion on blogs. So definitely avoid blogs. You'll know it's a blog if you go to the About Me page and if if they mention the word blog. So avoid that. Uh, poorly designed websites. If you click into the link and you can't navigate through it, stay away from it. Um, if you can't find an about page on their home page, or at the you usually scroll to the bottom, see if they have anything on the bottom of the of the home page. But if there's not a clear purpose to the website, not not an about page, not a contact information, then stay away from it. So let's kind of apply some of these to consider if they're credible. So this is one source. I want you to think about the arrows are pointing to. The arrows here, it's pointing to something saying the Journal of Advertising has the copyright. It has a DO, something called a DOI. And then it has the, the title of the article, pretty long. Engagement with social media and social media advertising. And then it has the authors and it has who they work for. They work for the University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. So you see, universe, it's already starting to sound pretty credible, right? Uh, look here, too, where this arrow is pointing to. It's an in-text citation, so they're doing research. Um, so take a second, think about it. Just the way it looks kind of answers the question, is this a credible source? The answer would be yes, because there's a lot of information about it already just from the homepage, the front part of the article. So this is an academic article in a journal. It's in the Journal of Advertising. This would be found through one of the library databases. So that's a very credible source. And uh, I'm sorry, it's kind of cut off. But this used to be a fun PowerPoint in my face to face. And I'm still trying to make it fun for you all in these strange times that we're in. Uh, This, let's take a look at this source. 
It's talking, it has the location of where it came out. Louisiana. Take a second. If you want to pause the video and read it, I'm sorry my arrows are cutting it off. But it's talking about a Canada goose. So an animal. It's, it's sound incredible, you know. It's written pretty well. Then it has a quote right here. You can't really see it, so I'll read it. My friends think I'm a bit neurotic, but I just want a quiet, stress-free flight home. So you're reading that and you're thinking, okay, who who's quote who are they quoting? Who did they interview? Is it some kind of science scientist that's talking about geese and where they migrate? Then it says, said the eight-year-old waterfowl. Okay, if you don't know what a waterfowl is, you can feel free to Google it. But when you Google it, I'll, I'll kind of work alongside. My computer at least is letting me search stuff. If you Google waterfowl, it'll tell you that it is a type of animal. It's a water bird. So this article is saying that this eight-year-old water bird talked. It's quoting the bird. Can birds talk? No, right? So it's already starting to sound weird. And then you're going to start seeing a shift in tone where it becomes a little unprofessional with the language. So it loses that credibility pretty rapidly after that quote. So even if you find something that looks like a news source, this you know, this is how news sources look. It states the city that it came out in, you know, it's it's written pretty well at first. But who are they quoting? This is quoting a a bird. So it's not credible. It is not credible at all. And I'll explain what what website this is from in just a second. I recommend if you want to pause the video and download this PowerPoint as well to kind of follow along because if you want to so if you want to pause the video and jump to this source and click this link you'll be taken to a video and if you want to pause the video watch it and think if it's credible and then jump back to the video. Think about why or why not it is credible. So if you pause the video and made a decision, I'll kind of go over it as well. This is a video. It says five things to know about our planet. And I wonder if I click it. Will it take, let's, let me click it. There we go. I don't want to play the video when I screen record, by the way, because I'm afraid of copyright. So that's why if you know, if you want to follow along and watch the video on your own. But the video says five things to know about our planet. So you think, okay, sounds accurate. Sounds like it's interesting. Could be some research. It even says something like volume and issue number. You see those usually in academic articles. So it's okay. This is sounding pretty credible. If you watch the video, it starts out pretty good. It has really pretty graphics of Earth. Five things to know about our planet. First question is, how long did the film take to produce? Now the answer, already, it loses credibility. It says, it took the film crew four years to shoot following pre-production. Okay, but then it says, which lasted approximately 4.5 billion years. Can one person live that long? If so, you need to share that with all of us because I'm not aware of that happening but that's false right not one person cannot live that long so it's already starting to sound very strange um the second thing it mentions what locations does the film feature due to tax incentives most of our planet was actually filmed uh, what does it say was actually filmed on neptune um people cannot go to neptune so it's not factual this video is designed very well though so it tricks you and it makes you think that it's credible, but it is not. Now, some of you all may know what this source is. This is from The Onion. Um, the Onion, and this article about the waterfowl came from that as well. The Onion is a satirical news site. It looks legit. It looks professional. but And it presents topics about real situations but it's satirical meaning it makes fun of things 
So if you ever find something from the onion and you don't know what it is, stay away from it. Take your time reading it. It's fun. It's enjoyable. But stay away from it to use for research is my point. So again, you got to be careful with this stuff. It tricks you. This one I really recommend you follow along and you click the the links, but I'll go ahead and click them as well. Um, the first one already kind of gives it away. The world's worst website ever. So if I click this, oh my gosh, what's going on? If you find a website that looks like this, this is not credible. It's not designed well. It has really cheesy 90s looking graphics <laughs> and it looks like it's going to give me a computer virus because it's just, it's, it's not designed well. So don't take information from anything that looks like this. Now, in a silly way, it is achieving its rhetorical purpose, right? It is the world's worst website ever. So it's, it's reaching its goal, but you don't want to stay away from poorly designed websites because it's, it's not the person who created this loses credibility and, um, let alone coming soon an even worse site. Can you imagine what that's going to look like? This, if 2020 was a website, it would be this one, right? It's just not, you know, it's not a, it's not a credible website. So stay away from information that looks like that. And then let's look at this one, si.edu. We already have a good feeling with that .edu because it's educational. Let's see what it is. Smithsonian. Do you know what the Smithsonian is? Even if you don't know, if you scroll down, it says Welcome tells you who they are. They're the world's largest museum, education, and research complex. They have that welcome message for you right at the top. And they tell you who they are and what they plan to explore for you to learn more. This is a very credible website. They have a lot of different tabs for you to go into and find out more. You can search certain information. And this is a website because it represents an organization. It's not a news article. For example, if you ever cited something from here, it would be a page on a website because it's a .edu. It's an educational website. Now, I think they have a magazine within their website as well. But if you're ever unsure, just scroll to the bottom as well. And if they don't have that welcome message like they do, they usually have something towards the bottom about who they are as well. So very, very credible. I'm so sorry if you're getting queasy. Okay, another thing you can do, very difficult, let alone in it before quarantine, so I don't expect this from you at all. It just depends on your topics too. Some topics aren't quite relevant for this, but if you'd like to be your own researcher in this process, meaning you want to conduct your own data that's not already published and available, you can do something called primary research. Now keep in mind, primary research is not required, so you don't have to do this at all. But if you're interested, primary research is where you are the researcher, meaning you're creating new data. So it's primary, it's first, it's new to existence. The other types of sources are secondary because it's already available to you. Somebody created that data and you're borrowing it and using it in your reports. If you want to create your own data, you do primary research. There's two forms of primary research that you would most likely choose if you liked, if you want to try this out. Interviews, that's where you write a list of questions down, you know, at least 10, and ask a professional these questions where you interview them, and you ask them questions related to your research topic. Their answers can be synthesized into your report the same way you use information from an article and put it into your report. You may not use all the answers, you may only use a few. You can directly quote it or paraphrase it. But you yourself, your last name and the year of the research would be the in-text citation as well. If you wanted to try a survey, that's another form of primary research where you type, I'm going to say type because surveys nowadays are even are very digital, where you type a list of questions, again, at least 10, and distribute to people where they can answer anonymously, meaning you don't know their names are not attached to their answers. And then you collect their answers to then again synthesize into your report. Meaning maybe you use some of the answers, maybe you use all. But surveys are better if you're trying to collect 
specific numbers. Specific, it's called it's called quantitative, meaning you're collecting number numerical information. Maybe you ask yes, no type survey answers, or you do multiple choice and you see the majority what they choose. You can do open ended where you can quote people and they answer open ended. They answer in a few sentences. But surveys are fun as well. Again, it just depends on your topic. Some topics you don't really need to depend on the public for the answers. It just depends on everybody's topics. Um, the cool thing about surveys is they're pretty fun and easy to create. The most credible website to create them on is something called SurveyMonkey. You can create a free account and create a very simple survey, different types of questions, and every you just share the link for everybody to answer. And I can share that link within the classes. I can put it on Padlet. I can email it to others. Um, you can share the link however you want, you know, on social media, through your own email as well. But it's a cool way to get some, it's kind of neat to go back and see the answers too, once it starts collecting more and more information. Uh, Twitter offers surveys. I've had a few students in the past, if they had a Twitter, so they typed some questions in and posted it to see if they would get some answers. Instagram, I put the little shocked face because social media every second is taking over our lives. I mean, I have Instagram, so I'm not judging, but I mentioned this because it's kind of cool. Instagram now offers surveys where you can post surveys on your story. You can type, you can type quiz. It looks more like a quiz, but you don't have to, you can remind them that it's not a, it's not a correct or incorrect and you can have them answer the questions. And then you can do polls as well, where you fill in either yes, no, or you can um, you can change that to have a different answer. I thought of this just because when I'm bored, I use the surveys just to entertain myself. And I ask dumb questions like, what what's your favorite type of pizza? <laughs> I always make it about food. Um, but you know, I like to see what my followers say after the full 24 hours and you can save the results. Um, it's anonymous. I mean, don't share. You, you, I think you can see who answers those questions. I'm not quite sure how Twitter works. Survey monkey, survey monkey should be anonymous. So there's no issue there. Twitter and Instagram, you know, maybe let them know that you could use it. You're going to use it for a paper so they don't need to answer if they're uncomfortable. You can remind them that you're not going to share their names anyways. But it's always safe to just kind of remind them. If you do an interview, of course, definitely verify that it's okay. And I can send, you know, documentation as well. You just have to be a little careful with that. Um, primary research is not required, but I like to go over it just you know, it could be fun to try out. I can help you with primary research if you need me to help you. I can help you with any type of these sources if you need me to help. But that's thinking about credibility. And um, if you all have any specific questions with your own sources, don't hesitate to ask me.